Hi friends, welcome to the session on Z transform based questions asked in a TRB exam. Right, uh, so the first two question they have asked is the initial value of uh, the sequence x of n whose x of z is 2 plus 3 z inverse plus 4 z power minus 2. Right, so what they gave here is uh, x of initial value they asked right so initial value we know the initial value theorem of z transform states that x of 0 okay let me write with some neat thing uh, x of uh, 0 the initial value of the sequence x of 0 is given by limit z tends to infinity x of z right so x of z they have given limit z tends to infinity x of z is 2 plus 3 z inverse plus 4 z power minus 2 we substitute z tends to infinity so 2 plus z is infinity so z inverse is nothing but 1 by z so 1 by z 3 by infinity this is 4 by z square z square is nothing but infinity square again infinity so what we get is it is 0 0 2 so my x of 0 is 2 so the initial value is uh, 2 so option d is a right answer okay now we go to the next problem so uh, this question the z transform of x of n is equal to 1 by 2 power n u of n plus 3 power n u of minus n minus 1 so this is simple question, direct question. We know, so what is the, the given data? X of n is equal to two signal they are given. We know the z transform of individual first. Uh, 1 by 2n is equal to u of n. First we find z transform of this one. This is what we know. The general form of this one is a n u of n as z transform of z by z minus a with ROC mod z greater than mod a. So, a instead of a we have 1 by 2. So, this will give z minus z set by z minus 1 by 2 with ROC is greater than a. a is nothing but 1 by 2 here. Right. Similarly, what about second one? It is 3 power n u of minus n minus 1. Right, this is general form is minus a n u of minus n minus 1 is equal to z by z minus a where ROC is mod z is less than mod a. In so here my plus is there, so if you put plus it will be minus. So follow the same principle a is equal to 3, so minus z by z minus uh, 3 with ROC is less than a, A is nothing but 3. So, here we have 2 ROC. First signal as ROC greater than 1 by 2. Second signal as ROC less than 3. That means ROC should be, should be uh, ROC of a combined signal is overlapping area. Suppose it is a thing, right? It is 1 by 2. This is 1 by 3, right? First signal has ROC greater than half. First, let me draw this. This is one, uh, not 1 by 3, it is 3, right? First signal has ROC of, uh, okay, sorry, right? So, first signal has ROC greater than, okay, greater than 1 by 2. That means first signal has ROC greater than 1, which is half. ROC should be outside that. It is going like this up to infinity. Second signal has ROC less than 3. So, it is 3, it is coming inside. So, it is going inside. Go inside. So, combined ROC is the overlapping area where this blue and white are overlapping in between half and 3. So, ROC should be greater than half and less than. 3. Right? So, when you are having a combined signal, you have to find ROC that should overlap. So, this is my ROC. Now, we solve the problem. We got the answer. So, what is that? It must be Z total is right? What is the total answer? So, ROC we found. So, X of Z is equal to 
for first signal uh, we get uh, z transform is z by z minus 1 by 2 for second signal it is minus z by z minus 3 with roc varies from half to 3 so where is that answer the answer is in option a right so z by z minus 1 by 2 minus z by z minus 3 ROC varies from 0 half to 3. So, option A is the right answer. Right. So, next question. The ROC of the Z transform. Just now only I wrote. ROC of Z transform X of N is equal to minus A power N U of minus 1 is. For this Z transform is Z by Z minus A. With ROC must be mod Z less than mod A. So, mod Z less than mod A or must than A. So, option C is a right answer. Fourth one. What about the number of zeros and the number of poles of H of Z? This simple question. We know that. How do you find the number of zeros? Zeros are nothing but the value which make total function 0. It is uh, that we can derive from numerator. What is that? My function is, transfer function is z into z plus 1 divided by z plus 2, sorry, z, z plus 1 by 2 into z plus 1 by 4, right. Now, we find poles and zeros, zeros are a function which makes total function is 0 uh, to values, zeros are the values which makes transfer function h of z is equal to 0. Normally, we derive zeros from numerator. So, for what value of z, the function will become 0. When you put z is equal to 0, when you substitute z to 0, total function will become 0. So, z is equal to 0 is a 1, 0. Right? Next. When you substitute z is equal to minus 1, total function becomes 0. Because it is 0, total multiply is 0. So, z is equal to minus 1 is a another 0. So, we have two zeros. Right? Next. Holds. Poles are a function which makes total function infinity. So, when you sub normally we derive this poles from denominator. When you substitute z is equal to minus 1 by 2, this will become 0, 1 by 0 infinity. So, z is equal to minus 1 by 2 is a pole. When you substitute z is equal to minus 1 by 4, this function will become 0, the total function will be infinity. So, z is equal to minus 1 by 4 is another pole. So, it is not z, it is p2 pole 1. This is pole 1, z1, one, z2. So, we have two poles and two zeros in this equation. The values of poles and zeros are this one. So, what about the question? Number of poles and zeros, 2, comma 2. Right? That's all about this session. I hope you understand all the problems clearly. If you are having any doubt, please ask me in comment section. Thank you.